Hey everybody, Linda aka The Gamer Girl here, and today we're gonna do a response video to Retro Rivals. They made a kick ass video, and we're gonna respond to it. So, Retro Rivals had asked about five questions in their video. What would they be like a general discussion of like retro and modern in general? And the first question was. What do you consider retro? What is considered retro games, retro consoles, and all that jazz? So, to me, retro is up until about PlayStation 2 right now because they are like a generation behind. When you get to like two generations behind or a generation behind is when I consider it retro now. So, when it was back in the day, when PS2 was out, it was only... Nintendo. Nintendo was retro to me. So it has to skip a generation or two before I consider it retro, before when they stop doing it, they have nothing in print anymore. Nintendo has stopped printing GameCube, Sony has stopped printing PS2, and PSP, and also when you get to Microsoft, they have stopped printing like original Xbox slash some of the Xbox 360 are done, so it's literally the discs are now converted to Xbox discs, so that's when you start getting gray area. So we stick to original Xbox because of that reason. I think of, is it out of print? Can you no longer get it if you go to a regular store? And also, is it behind a generation or two? So for me, it's PS2, Xbox, GameCube. Those are where the cutoff is. Once they stop printing and considering Xbox 360, PS3, and anything to do with, you know, because I, I still see PS3 games being printed as we speak. So, Lemon Run does that. I know another company that makes PS3 games. Once they stop making those, that's when I'll start considering it retro. But until then, I can get me a PS3 game. I can buy it brand new. It's still considered, it's not there. Next one is value of retro games versus modern games. They had to make the discussion about would you pay a lot for a modern game or retro game? Where is it on your spectrum of like what is too much and stuff like that? And for me the question is super easy because I have a budget and my budget is $60 flat. Retro or modern. I don't care what it is. If it's $60 or more, I won't buy it. If it's $60 or less, I'm good for it. So if it's a retro game, that's okay for me to pay 60 bucks or less. But even a modern game, I have not bought a collector's edition at all. I have not paid for anything that is above 60 because I don't want to start down that rabbit hole of, oh, I got this, now I have to get that. So I got this collector's edition, so now the next game has to be a collector's edition and so on and so forth because I know my personality. Once I start, I can't stop. So it has to be a cutoff, and the cutoff is 60. I don't care if it's retro. Now, I don't mind if somebody buys retro games and pays $100 or $200. And same thing for modern gaming. I don't care either way. I am cool with somebody buying a collector's edition of a brand new game and paying like 100 150 That's because they got whatever they got. Now, if the collector's edition is crap, then it's like, well... You bought a really expensive statue or whatever. That's your prerogative. That's your money. I don't bash anybody for doing that, but it's just not for me. I'm not going to spend more than 60 Now, if a game is borderline uh, like Last of Us 2 where it was 70 I'd wait till it's on sale. I got mine. Um, I had uh, some credits, so I used my credits from when I had on the store put those towards it and then it made it 60 so I got basically $10 off using like my I had $5 coupons and different things like that so I used that and then a bunch of trade credit threw that in there so technically I got rid of some games maybe somebody else will play them and I got a good game but I'm not gonna pay 70 80 bucks so Last of Us 2 as much as I love the game I'm not gonna pay the next question is is beating a game via emulation cheating? I say no, but there's some stipulations to that. If you are bragging about it online that you beat a game and I saw you play with save states or I saw you play with something like that, 
your credibility goes out the window. So when you do the end of the year games I beat or different things like that, I saw you cheating technically, so I don't trust your list anymore. But if you play and you play it through with no save states, no nothing, you're just using emulation because you don't have the game on your library when your collection, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. As long as you play it through all the way through. Like I played Final Fight 3 on stream. I did not use save states. I used the continues that were given. I don't know exactly how many continues were given in the original game. I think it was four or five. And I just once I played it, if that was it, that was it. I was gonna lose all the continues, I was gonna lose all the lives, I would have restarted and started over again and try to beat it. But I'm not gonna go bragging around that I used, you know, save states and I beat the game. I finished the game. That was it. I didn't go and beat the game. But if I played all the way through the original way, like there was save points in the game, there is other points in the game where you have multiple continues, multiple lives, whatever it is, I didn't run credit cleared, I didn't know death run it, I beat the game. But I'm not gonna say that I use this point or that point if I'm using save states. If I'm using save states, that's just me playing a game because it's on the Nintendo Switch or it's on my RetroPie and I've never played it before in my life. Found it and I'm super excited to play it so I don't want to keep dying and not seeing the end. I'll just use save states for that point. But that will not go on my list of games I beat at the end of the year or will not go on my list of like games I finished. That'll be on my backlog of like, hey, I gotta play this, I gotta beat that. So yes, technically you can use save states, but to me that is not beating the game. But I don't knock anybody who wants to play like that. If you want to stream like that, go for it. But don't be saying that you know death run something or you want credit clear something or you beat a game and bragging about it. If you're just playing the game just to play the game because you want to stream it and see what it's like for the first time, go for it. I'm not knocking you. Next question on the list was, is it worth beating a retro game in this day and age? Yes. Point blank, yes. I love beating games from back in the day that I didn't have and I have it on my retro pie. I'll play it all the way through. I love taking suggestions from the community and seeing what they want me to play next, what game I didn't have on my list of games that I played back when I was younger, and I love going through and seeing all the games that I couldn't buy because I couldn't afford it, my family didn't have a huge budget, it was a couple games every year to add to the library, and if you got too many games and it got cluttery, you had to get rid of a few just to get the next one. So. I love going through and playing old retro games. I said at the beginning I played Final Fight 3 all the way through, beat that game. I enjoyed that game. That was a fun game. The storyline, everything was so 90s. It reminds you of back in the day. Like the cheese factor was there. You loved seeing the one-liners and everything from all the games. And sometimes it was so ridiculous to see something you're like, they really put that in a game in the 90s? Yes, they did. I want 80s games, I want 90s games, I want 70s games. I don't care what game it is. I will have fun playing it all the way through slash beating it. It is worth the time to go through and play old games. Next one is compared to retro games, are modern games easier now or is it an even split? I say to that, depends on the game. There is some games that are super freaking hard, super hard to get the trophies or achievements, and some of them are super easy, and that just depends on the person. There is easy modes that are way easier than back in the day, but you can still play it on normal. You don't have to play it on easy, but it depends on the genre, it depends on the game, and also you gotta remember that back in the day, retro games were technically shorter and easier that way. They were like 15 minutes max an hour or two hours depending on what kind of game you're playing. So they're easier in that aspect because you just sit down, you play, it could be 15 minutes up to two hours, you know you can beat it in a day and you know you can go all the way through and that was why they were a little bit more difficult in some people's opinion because they had to be otherwise you would beat that in five seconds and go oh that wasn't my money's worth. You didn't know back then how easy they were. You didn't know how short they were because you were just a kid playing and we didn't have internet to tell you like, hey, 
This game is beatable in 10 hours. This game is beatable in two hours. We have that now. Like people immediately, the minute they get at the game, they play it, they show you how long it is. They go, okay, if you play it this way, it's 20 hours, 30 hours. So for me, Modern games are a little bit more difficult because I have to play them over several days and I have to remember where I am. And also, like if you play Bloodborne, that is a kick-ass game that takes a lot of like memorization and patience. And I've seen many people play it. I will rage quit on that one, so that one is a no. But I see where everybody's coming from and the fact that they have easier modes, they have easier ways to get through everything. Before, it was two difficulties on most games. It was normal and hard, and that was it. There was no easy. And if you played through, there was no saving. There was no this, there was no that. So you had to bust your way through all the way to the very end. But at the other end, it was because you could beat the game if you really knew what you were doing in 15 to 2 hours. So I say it's 50-50. It's an even split. There is games that are still difficult nowadays. <laughs> Look at Super Meat Boy! Super Meat Boy is one of the freaking hardest games I've ever played in my life. And I still haven't beat that game because I rage. That one is super difficult to play and you have to memorize every single thing. And if you forget one little thing, finito, you're done. So whatever they say, I, I see some games that I see where the beatable factor is and you can play through and get through everything you need to get through but I see the other factor of I played I remember when I was a kid playing certain games and just going wow that was easy I beat that in no time flat coming in now as an adult because I took my time I, I understood different puzzles I paid attention to more stuff so the games that were more difficult over time have gotten easier. So with retro games, you have all the memorization and the muscle memory of like different things and going, oh yeah, I remember this part, I remember that part. Oh, I forgot about this, but I still now remember, you know, stuff like that. So I say it's 50-50. I say modern and retro are both difficult in their own aspects because you don't have saves, but you are there for 10 hours trying to figure out a puzzle. And it's just like Tomb Raider. Some of those games, once you figured it out, it was super easy and you breezed through. You just gotta know where the puzzle is and how to beat it. Otherwise, you're there for 50 minutes trying to figure out the dang puzzle and it's literally just look up and there's the crystal. <laughs> and with that, that is the five questions they asked. So I'm gonna throw an open tag like they did. What do you think? There are five questions. What are your opinions on it? If you want to make a video, go for it. It's an open tag. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to drop a link for their video, the original video, in the description. Check it out. And as always, keep on gaming. Hit the like button. If you're new, please subscribe. And as always, keep on gaming and stay safe out there. Because it's a little crazy right now. Bye, everybody. Linda, the gamer girl. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games too.